today we are going to start with study of morphology anatomy reproduction and life cycle of the pinus when we talk about the classification of this cycas it belongs to the class coniferopsida order coniferales a family pinaceae and genus pinus actually it is a tall tree and looks from conical in appearance and forms a dense evergreen type of the forest in the northern uh, temperate and the subalpine regions of the world mostly grow in high altitudes uh, normally ranging from uh, 1000 to 3000 meters from mean sea level some of the species of this genus include pinus roxburghi pinus wallichiana pinus girardiana and the pinus insularis so these are the some of the common plants belongs to the genus pinus when we talk about the sporophytic plant body the sporophyte of this plant is differentiated into root stem and leaves the main stem is branch the root is tap root system and this tap root system uh, grows well and the roots are covered with the fungal hyphae called the mycorrhizae here you can observe that this is a body sporophytic plant body and this is differentiated into it is a root system well developed root system is there then the canopy where this is and differentiated into a leaf like structures the stem portion is quite important the stem is cylindrical erect woody and most of the times well branched these branches are called monopodial branches the long shoots or the branches with unlimited growth and branches with limited growth they are called dwarf shoots Uh, long shoots are basically uh, present on the main trunk the apical buds can grow indefinitely providing the pyramidal appearance uh, to the tree and these branches uh, bear a uh, small scaly leaves these branches do not have apical buds and hence the they show only limited type of the growth and it is developed in the axils of the scale leaves and bears both scale and foliage leaves so this is the basic difference in the long shoots and the dwarf shoots where long shoots are showing the unlimited growth and dwarf shoots shows the the limited growth and they develop in the axils of the scaly leaves and bears the both scales and the foliage leaves where there are two basic types of the leaves are there and the scaly leaves and the foliage leaves here you can observe that these are the a uh, scaly leaves which are uh, slightly brownish in color and these are the greenish in color which are considered as the foliage leaves these dark brown uh, membranous thin and very small structures they are mostly appressed to the uh, stem and they present on both long and the dwarf shoots their function is to protect the young buds of the foliage leaves the scaly leaves on the dwarf shoots have distinct midrib and are called the data fields foliage leaves are green angular and needle like structures here you can observe that these are the angular needle like structures are there and these are born on the dwarf shoots a dwarf shoot with a group of needle like uh, foliage leaves is known as the foliar spur uh, the number of needles as per the dwarf shoot varies among the species to species the number of the needles or number of the leaves is varying it may be a one in pinus monophylla where you can find two leaves in the pinus silvestris three leaves three foliage leaves in pinus girardiana four in pinus quadrifolia and five in the pinus excelsa so these are the foliage leaves can be observed from the axil of the one scaly leaf now we have to shift the anatomical portion of the pinus here in the ts of a root as we already discussed ts is the basically tap root system and this tap root system also incorporates the mycorrhizal growth the internal structure of root reveals the presence of epiblema cortex and the stele these are the epiblema the outermost layer this is the cortex this is uh, this is the diagrammatic sketch of uh, the ts root where this portion is the cortex zone and endodermis which is followed by the pericycle where you can find that centrally there is the presence of peat and the phloem is there in between the two metathallium elements 
metathylem elements are uh, larger vascular elements uh, xylem elements and protothylem are the smaller protothylem elements which can be present at the peripheral region uh, we also observed that the, there is the presence of resin canal uh, this epiblema is made up of the single layer of the parenchyma cells and cortex is quite a wide zone and consists of the parenchyma some of the cells have the resin ducts here in this diagram you can observe that find the outermost layer which is the parenchyma and it is a epiblema structure whereas this cortex zone is of somewhat similar size and these uh, cortical zones are also the parenchyma cells resin ducts are also uh, present there here you can find these are the resin canals which are showing in the blue and these resin ducts are also present endodermis and this is made up of the suberized cells uh, which can be impregnated with the tannins here you can clearly observe that this is the innermost layer where you can find the endodermis uh, in diagram uh, diagrammatic sketch you can observe that uh, endodermis which is followed by these are nothing but the suberized cells which may contain the presence of tannin so uh, a multi layer pericycle uh, made up of the parenchyma cells is also present a multi layered structure normally uh, which is having a single layer but here in the pinus we can find the multi layered endodermis is present the vascular tissue is radial diarch and the exarch xylem is present the protothylem elements uh, may be bifurcated from in the form of y shaped structure and the resin ducts lie lying in the between of two arms of the protothylem secondary growth may be present here you can find these are the y shaped structures here uh, we can clearly observe that these y shaped structures and they may be uh, incorporating the resin ducts so on the both side of the resin ducts there is the growth of protothylem elements can be taken place here stem is also typical the internal organization of the stem shows the three different regions uh, known as the epidermis cortex and the vascular tissue whereas we find that uh, in the root in instead of epidermis uh, there uh, is the presence of epiblema but here epidermis cortical zone and the vascular tissue can be observed in the stem piece of the stem epidermis is normally uh, made up of the compactly arranged heavily cutinized cells where cuticle is present and these are composed of the compactly arranged cells uh, mostly the parenchyma cells it is followed by the few layered sclerenchyma hypodermis which can be observed here uh, this is the diagrammatic sketch the outermost layer is of epidermis and it is highly cuticularized the innermost which is the uh, slightly magenta colored line Uh, which is uh, made up of the hypodermis and it is a multi layer structure sclerenchyma cells the cortex consists of the thin walled parenchyma cells resin canals and tannins with filled cells which are present in this region we, here you can find this is the all area which is known as the cortical zone cortex zone and it which is normally made up of the parenchyma cells endodermis is indistinguishable it is not uh, clearly identifiable and uh, from the cortical cells so it is slightly mixed type of the structure can be observed here and the vascular region is surrounded by the pericycle and the region consists of the five or six vascular bundles which are present uh, at the center in in the form of ring and vascular bundles they are conjoined collateral type of the vascular bundles is open and end arc type of the structure is there uh, pith and medullary rays are present and secondary growth is normally present in the form of annual rings can be observed here here you can observe this is the pericycle endodermis cannot be distinguished so this here you can observe that this is the complete zone this is the parenchyma cortical zone uh, multi layer endodermis is there and it is followed by the vascular bundles here you can observe the vascular bundles and these are the conjoined collateral open type of the vascular bundles are there all these uh, smaller resin ducts can also be observed here so here you can observe the resin ducts in the actual cellular structure so phloem xylem and at the center we find there is a pith like structure where it is filled with the 
parenchymatous cells. This leaf is typical in shape. Normally, we find that uh, there is the isobilateral type of the leaf in most of the members. But here, the leaf is uh, of the needle or the acicular type of the leaf is there. It is also known as the foliage leaf as it is green in color. The internal structure of this needle uh, shaped leaf shows the xerophytic adaptations. Where a water scarcity is there in such areas, the xerophytic uh, characteristic of the leaf is being developed. And here uh, in Pinus also, we find the xerophytic adaptations can be easily observed in the leaf. It appears triangular in shape and divided into epidermis, mesophyll, and the vascular bundles. Here you can observe, this is the outermost layer is of the epidermis. The second zone is uh, the mesophyll tissue. And at the center, we find the vascular bundle. Here in the cellular diagram, you can easily observe that. The stomatal type are typical here. They are sunken type of the stomata are there. The epidermis is single layer and possesses a thick cuticle. This is right inside and it is sunk in the epidermal and hypodermal zones. So it is quite deeper to maintain the moisture or the water in the stomatal areas. Epidermis is followed by a few layers of the sclerenchymatous hypodermis. It is interrupted by the substomatal cavity. As this stomata shows two cavities, the outer and the inner cavity, so the inner cavity may be present in the hypodermal region. The mesophyll is not uh, differentiated into a palisade-like tissue, uh, palisade and the spongy parenchyma. It is thin-walled cells with the chloroplast pageant. Normally, palisade cells are nothing but the elongated vertical cells, but here we cannot observe the, uh, these uh, cells which are elongated in size and shape. So, it is just uh, cells which are having the chlorophyll pigments in that. The cells are peculiar in numerous small foldings which project into the cavities. Here you can observe, it is the slight magnified structure. Here you can observe the epidermis. This is the single layer epidermis. This is a sclerenchymatous hypodermis. And below that, this is the cortical zone and this is the transfusion tissue. Epidermis is punctured with the stomata and these stomata having the two cavities. Here are the first cavity and this is the sunken cavity. Second cavity is present. And because of that, the loss of moisture from the leaf is very less. The infoldings increase into the photosynthetic area of the needle leaves. So here you can find this is the photosynthetic zone where you can find there is the presence of the chlorophyll pigments in that. The resin canal is present in the mesophyll tissue and a single layered endodermis separates the vascular region from the cortex. Here you can find this is the bundle sheath which is separating from the cortical zone. A multilayer pericycle contains the presence of starch. Here, starch granules can be easily observed that. And here you can find the presence of secretory cells, then chymatous fibers, and all the structures which may be present in the cortex zone. There are two types of the specialized cells called albuminous cells and the tracheal cells in the leaf. Uh, the first cell, we can say the specialized cell, albuminous cells, helps to pass the substances from mesophyll to the phloem, while the another tracheal cells, this tracheal cells helps in the water conduction and the constitution of the transfusion tissue. So these things we must have to keep in mind that the tracheal cells helps in the water conduction and the albuminous cells uh, helps in the passage of the substances from the mesophyll to the phloem. Two vascular bundles are present. Here you can observe that. This is the first one and this is the second one. And these are separated by the sclerenchymatous tissue. The vascular bundles are conjoint, collateral and open type of the vascular bundles are there. This is the bundle sheath. This is the all cortical zone. And this is stained a structure which is the epidermis and a single layer hypodermis is present. As this pinus is the heterosporous in nature, it produces two types of the spores, that is microspores and the megaspores. 
the plants are monoecious and both male and female cones strawberry develop on the different branches of the same plant ata monoecious aslyam kay zalele ekach plant var pan don vegvegla branches var male ani female cone aplyala develop hotana distat so uh, microspores and megaspores present on the same plant Uh, it is present in the male cone and male cones are produced in the uh, clusters of the branches of the unlimited growth and each cone develops on the axil of the scale leaf here you can observe that here these are the male cones and these are growing on the presence of the unlimited tribe of the growth clusters on the branches of unlimited growth each cone develops on the axil of the scaly leaf the male cone consists of the a uh, centrally located cone and is surrounded by a numerous spirally arranged microsporophylls here you can observe that this is the male cone yellow of the male cone these are all the microsporophylls these microsporophylls bears the microsporangia and that and they are surrounded on the central axis now it bears the microsporangia at the base and the abaxial side of the microsporophyll abaxial side is the lower side of the leaf and here suppose consider this is the one microsporophyll where on the lower surface you can find the presence of microsporangia and this microsporangium bears a numerous winged type of the microspores which are haploid in nature and these are considered as a pollen grains now these microspores represent the male gametophyte and they can easily blown with the wind because of the presence of this wing on the microspores when we talk about the female cones in the pinus female cones are formed on the groups of 1 to 4 in the axis of the scaly leaves the female cone takes about 3 years to mature this is one of the female cone ls of the female cone here you can observe that it almost taking the 3 years to completely mature this female cone and it has a central axis around which megaspores are the spirally arranged this is the uh, ls of the female cone here you can find the centrally present axis and on this axis the spirally arranged megasporophylls are present and each megasporophyll bears almost one ovule in that and these are the structures which are called as a ovuliferous scales the megasporophyll is uh, the compound structure consists of basically two scales bract scale which is normally sterile and the ovuliferous scales which is fertile bears the ovule the dorsal surface of each ovuliferous scale bears two ovules here you can easily observe that this is the dorsal surface upper surface of the leaf where you can find normally two ovules are present and the lower surface where we can find the uh, sterile bract which protects it the ovules bears the megaspores which represent the female gametophyte so here when we uh, take out one separate megasporophyll here you can observe that two ovules are there and this is the complete a megasporophyll a fertile structure which is present on that and the smaller scaly leaves which is the sterile one in pinus we find there is a wind pollination is most favor it takes place uh, normally known as the anemophilous type of the pollination the microspores of the pollen grains as they are having the wings they can be easily spread with the winds or easily spread with the air and having the four cell structures two are prothelial cell one is generative cell and one is the tube cell so this is the complete structure of the microspore or we make call it as a pollen grain at the time of pollination the secretion oozes out from the micropyle of the ovule so when sticky drop is come out it is present on the microsporophyll of the ovule and it entangles the pollen grains which helps to lodge them on the pollen chamber so this drop here you can observe that here these are the pollen grains and this is the sticky drop here you can find two egg cells and these prothelial cells this micropylar end oozes one drop like structure and these pollen grains can be settled down uh, stick to the 
drop, a sticky drop secretion. The tube cell produces to form a pollen tube. The generative cell divides, divides to produce stock cell and the body cell. The body cell again divides into unequal male cells and fertilization takes place after about a year of pollination. So quite slow process can be observed in the pinus means only the pollination and the fertilization it takes to complete the process around one year and after fertilization a complete development of the female cone at maturity level so it takes around three years. The pollen tube containing two male nuclei and they penetrates to the micropyle and reaches up to the egg level. Uh, one of the male nuclei fuses with the egg forming diploid zygote and the remaining one gets degenerated. Here you can find these structures, how it can travel from the one stage to the another stage. The fertilized egg, which now call it as a zygote, undergoes the mitotic division and develops into an embryo. The polyembryony is present and this polyembryony undergoes several changes and finally becomes a winged seed. This seed germination is called as a epigeal type of the seed germination. Winged pollens are there. This forms a pollen tube and this pollen tube has the male gametes. Four male gametes are there and one of the gamete which is the fuses with the egg cell and thus the fertilization is taken place. Here you can find a stepwise development. Here it is a megasporangium. In megasporangium, there is the megaspore mother cell. After meiosis, the four megaspores, four haploid megaspores are being formed. These megaspores, out of four megaspores, only one uh, remains uh, viable and other three gradually degenerates. And where we find the archegonium, there is the development of only one ovule egg cell is taken place. Now, here you can find these microspores. The microgametophyte germinating pollen is situated on the this micropylar end on the sticky substance. Pollen tube generates and from this pollen tube, this egg cell is gradually get the fertilized. After fertilization, we find this single cell of diploid nature gradually divides into two cell structure two to four cell, four to eight cell. And this eight cell structure now enters known as the embryo, which is having the potential sporophyte. Here you can find a suspensor cell is being developed and this suspensor cell gradually grows. When we talk about the life cycle of this pinus, here you can observe a graphical representation of the life cycle of the plant. The pinus, it is the sporophytic plant body deployed in nature. And on the same plant, we find there is the development of the female cone and the male cones on the two different branches. This female cone having the megasporophylls and on the megasporophylls, we find the megasporangium is developed. These megasporangiums is having the deployed nature of the megaspores. This megaspore mother cell is actually a deployed cell. After meiotic divisions, they become the haploid megaspores. Four haploid megaspores can be developed, out of which three get degenerated and only one uh, megaspore remains viable. The same condition can be observed in the male cones, where male cone is the deployed structure, microsporangia, the microsporophylls having the microsporangium, and this microsporangium having the deployed microspores. These deployed microspore mother cells when get into the meiotic division, it forms a four haploid microspores. And these haploid microspores, or we can say the pollen grains, are get fertilized with the ohum or the egg cell, which is uh, developed through the meiotic divisions from the megaspore mother cell. After fertilization, syngamy is taken place. And fertilization, there is the deployed oospore is developed. This oospore get 
uh, matured into a embryo like structures which is again the diploid structure and this embryo is uh, gradually converted as a seed and these seeds are diploid and again have capacity to grow into a new plant after the germination so this is uh, all about pinus